know, oftentimes, once we actually find a rate of a chemical reaction, it's very tempting to be able to use that rate to compare one reaction against another, to try and figure out, hey, is this one faster or is this one slower? Now, it's really important to know a couple things going into this. Uh, we need to develop a set of rules for now what's fair when we go to compare the rates of two chemical reactions. Now, I've made a little graph for you over here about how concentration of maybe some reaction can change over time. And what I want you to notice is how that concentration actually doesn't stay constant and it's not changing at a constant rate. The rate of many chemical reactions will change over time. So we need to pick a time that is fair for all chemical reactions. Um, another thing is that not all reactions take the same amount of time to finish. Of time to finish. So again, we need to pick a time that's consistent and constant for all chemicals. Now, the one thing that all chemical reactions do have in common, all chemical reactions start with only the reactants. You know, some may take a thousand years to develop their first even speck of product, but all chemical reactions will have the reactants present at the beginning. And the other thing too is all chemical reactions tend to be their fastest right at the beginning of that chemical reaction. So the most fair way to compare the rate of one reaction against another is again to compare apples to apples. What do they all have in common? They all have reactants and they all have a starting time. So we usually only compare initial rates of reaction. It's really the only fair way of comparing one reaction against another.